Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. I'm Tony Freckwinkle. I'm Alderman and Democratic Committeeman of the Fourth Ward. Uh, I've been Alderman since 1981. That's 18 years. And in that time, I've worked hard to rebuild my ward. I, when I was elected in 1991, <clears throat> there were 3,000 city-owned lots in my ward. There are less than 300 left. And we've done a lot to rebuild and re-knit re the communities that I represent. A lot of residential development, a lot of uh, emphasis on our public schools, a lot of new public schools, including many of the charter schools in my ward. Uh, so I put a lot of emphasis not only on physically rebuilding the communities I represent, but trying to strengthen them by improving the quality of, of public education and public safety. I want to bring the same energy and the same commitment to improving the communities that I represent uh, to the county board that I brought to the fourth board. Whenever I talk about the county, I usually say that government has two obligations. One is to provide quality service, and the other is to do that as effectively and efficiently as possible. And we're falling down on both sides of the equation in the county. The county uh, has two principal things that are a part of its mission, although it does a lot of other things. First is health care, and secondly is the criminal justice system. Roughly one out of every three county dollars uh, goes into health care. That's the hospitals and clinics. I, I want to commend Commissioner Sufferman because it was uh, his uh, vision to have an independent governing board for the county hospitals and clinics. And that was a great idea. And unfortunately, um, he was only able to, to put that in place for a three-year uh, kind of experiment. And I think the first thing we ought to do is try to make that permanent. That, that has to be done because it gives some distance and it gives an opportunity for professional um, management of our health care system. And let me tell you how bad it is over there. Um, they brought in Bill Foley. They spent their first year kind of looking for a new chief executive officer. They brought in Bill Foley from California. He'd been here in Illinois, out in Aurora and Joliet in a system called Provena. And they said, your first job is to provide us with regular financial reports. Now, we have a system, again, one of every three county dollars, almost a billion dollars, goes to health care. We, we don't have regular financial reports. So your charge, this independent governing board, was charged with managing the system, but they didn't get monthly reports or quarterly reports or, or biannual reports or annual reports because there were none. Now, if you're going to manage a billion dollar system and you don't get regular financial reports, you've got, you got to get work cut out for you. When he got there and they told him this was his first job, uh, he told them it was going to take a little longer than he expected to do this because there weren't even systems in place to provide the numbers to do the reports, let alone produce the reports. So the, the, the county, unfortunately, has a reputation, even among government entities uh, here in the area, as being the most uh, challenged in terms of um, modern management practices and good governance. But it's not just managing the county, the county health care system that's our challenge. I think it's also our challenge to try to bring together those providers of, of health care, either hospitals or clinics, to the same population that the, that the Cook County system serves the indigent, those who are without insurance, the Medicare and Medicaid uh, uh, patient population, the hospitals and clinics that serve them need to be brought together by the county. We need to try to work together because we're all in the same boat. And as those institutions close, and a lot of our community hospitals have closed, such as Michael Reese in the north end of my ward most recently, the burden falls to the others who provide that care and to the county system. So we've got to get everybody to work together, see if we can lobby together particularly, actually, we should be doing that now um, as, as the Congress is looking at health care reform to be sure that, that we, get, we get our fair share of the public resources that are going to be available. <coughs> On the criminal justice side, Sheriff Darts, instead of giving out kudos, has a small program that is a diversion program. It takes people who might otherwise be in jail, awaiting trial or sentencing, and puts them in uh, a program first that helps them deal with their addictions, and then helps them get education, employment, training. So instead of just sitting in the jail because they're awaiting trial or sentencing, they're in a program that helps them deal with their, their substance abuse and then helps get them on a positive path. These are nonviolent offenders, and we could have 10 times as many people in those programs as we presently do. Likewise, we've got to have, and that's diversion at the front end, the back end we've got to have more alternate sentencing. People need to be sentenced to things like boot camp, to substance abuse treatment, residential substance treatment programs, even to electronic monitoring, where at least they're at home and, and providing their own uh, food and shelter. But that requires getting the state's attorney, the public defender, 
the chief judge, the sheriff to work together. And I think that's the obligation of the president of the county board. That's where that leadership should come from. To get everybody to agree that we're going to put more emphasis on diversion and alternate sentencing rather than putting people in the jail. And we're in trouble, we're in constant trouble with the federal government about overcrowding in the jail. And a lot of the problems that we have there are the result of overcrowding. And if we could separate people out at the beginning through diversion and at the back end through alternate sentencing, we do a lot to deal with those issues. I think it's also important for the county to be an actor in economic development. Uh, Senator Durbin, bless his heart, has been a proponent of the high-speed rail network. That's an example of a huge public works project that I think um, would be a, of tremendous economic benefit to Chicago, and the county ought to be out there advocating for it along with, along with uh, our senator. Uh, <coughs> Chicago is the capital of the Midwest, and the high-speed rail system would reinforce that. This would be the hub of a network that would go to Detroit, to Indianapolis, and St. Louis, Madison, the Twin Cities, and Madison, Milwaukee, and the Twin Cities. And it not only is it a, is a project that would provide a lot of jobs, but it's also a project that would increase the potential for economic growth for our region with Chicago as the capital. So the, the county can't be a, a bystander. And those who are working on regional development issues, uh, the Metropolitan Planning Council, uh, Chicago Metropolitan Agency for Planning, Metropolis 2020, all report that the county isn't at the table as we're trying to talk about regional development issues. And the county needs to be a central player, not on the margins, not, uh, not out of the picture. So we've got a lot of work to do, and I think I've shown in my 18 years as alderman that I have both the energy and the vision to do that work, and I want to bring both of them to county government. Thank you.